Yo, K Pace Guy here. What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to Seven Reasons Why, episode number 10. This is Seven Reasons Why You Shouldn't Mix Different Subwoofers. Stay tuned. Perfect! Reason number seven is gonna be looks, just simply how it looks. You have a piano black finish on your one subwoofer and then have a black walnut on another, or you have a really large 15 inch subwoofer and then you have a 10 inch next to it. It's just aesthetically not pleasing. You wanna look at your speakers as pieces of art, pieces of furniture. You wouldn't get a green couch and then get a blue sofa to go with it, a love seat, a rocking chair. You wouldn't want to do that. So look at your speakers as art. Whenever you're getting subwoofers, you want them to look identical. Not only sound identical, but look the same as well. So when you get one subwoofer, try to find the same model or at least the same brand so that they look aesthetically close, if not exactly the same. That's going to be reason number seven. Reason number six is going to be frequency response. And we'll go into this one a little bit more than number seven. With frequency response, you're going to have a subwoofer, usually a subwoofer ranges from maybe 200 hertz down to 20 hertz, maybe 180 down to 20 hertz, but that 20 hertz is like the, the, the bar right there where a subwoofer really needs to meet. 20 hertz is probably the highest I will let a subwoofer go as far as low frequency, if it makes any sense. 20 hertz is the lowest um, number, but that's the highest number I will let it go in, in terms of how low it can go. And so you really want to match subwoofers that get that low. And different subwoofers have different frequency responses at different volumes. So let's say I have an SVS subwoofer, I have a PB4000, and then I, I get a, mm, a clip subwoofer, a, a 12 inch clip subwoofer um, that gets down to 20 hertz as well. But they get down to 20 hertz at different volumes. Let's say SVS gets down 20 hertz at 100 dB and then the clip subwoofer gets down to 20 hertz at like 80 dB. So now you have an imbalance. You may be getting the same frequency response, but you're getting a different volume at that given response. And that's the same through all the responses in, the, in this frequency sweep. You may be getting a subwoofer that um, gets to down to 25 hertz, and then your other subwoofer gets down to 31. You're having a lot of different imbalances, um, and then you're running to a lot of volume issues. So if both subwoofers play at 31 hertz at the same time, one subwoofer may be way louder at that given hertz than the other subwoofer. So now you're running into blend issues, phase issues, things like that. So reason number six is going to have to be frequency response because it's pretty important. Reason number five is going to be driver or enclosure size. It's really important to match your subwoofer's driver size. Let's start with that one. You can have 8 inch, 10 inch, 12 inch, 15 inch, maybe even an 18 inch subwoofer in your home theater but you want to match it with something of that same size. It kind of plays along with frequency response, different size enclosures, different size drivers play different frequency responses at different volumes, but not only is that an issue, you want to match the subwoofer size because of latency, how accurate they are, how um, prominent they are at certain frequencies. So for example, I have two PV4000s, they're a 13 and a half inch driver. I also have a PV1000 that's a 10 inch driver. And so what the PB4000 is good at, the PB1000 is terrible at, and then vice versa. So being a smaller driver in that 10 inch PB1000, I get more quick, more accurate bass response, but I don't necessarily get loud and boomy. It's, it's quick, it's accurate, it gets down pretty low. But what the PB4000 does is really digs down there about that 13 hertz range. I'm able to get really low thunderous bass at really high volumes. And if I was to put my PB1000 at that same volume, at that same hertz, it would blow up. So it's really important to make sure you get the same driver size because that changes the way your bass sounds. Enclosure size is really important too because that also plays a factor in how your bass sounds. The bigger the box, the lower, just naturally lower the speakers want to play. All that space inside that box, the resonance inside that box is going to allow you to get really, really deep bass. Really, really deep bass. The smaller the enclosure, most likely the smaller the driver and it's gonna sound much tighter, doesn't get as low, um, more accurate, things like that. So you're really gonna to wanna to match your driver and your enclosure size if you're gonna have two subwoofers or more. Reason number four is going to be sound. And again, reason six, five, and now four, they all kinda of go hand in hand. Sound's gonna be number four. Think about sound this way. 
if I'm singing a note, ah, and then I have another guy who's, I don't know, much taller, much bigger than me, singing the same note, it's gonna sound different. We're different people. So think of your subwoofer as two different identities, two different people. If we're playing the same note, it's not gonna sound the same out of one speaker as it is another. If I'm singing the note, it's not gonna sound the same as my partner to my right because we're different people, different tonalities, different timbre, things like that. So it's the same principles with your subwoofer. If you have two different subwoofers playing the same notes, you're gonna have a different sound. So it's super important to try to blend two of the same subwoofers together, at least stay in the same brand. If you're gonna have a Klipsch, get another Klipsch. If you're gonna have an SVS, get another SVS. If you're gonna have a PSA, get a PSA. Um, that's what you wanna stick with. If you have a Paradigm, get a Paradigm. You don't wanna try to mix different brands together because you're gonna have a tough Tough time battling peaks, nulls, different tonalities, frequency response, crossover. You're gonna have a hard time. You're gonna feel like you're missing something. Um, so if you can match your subwoofer's brand, even model, do so. Um, but stick in the same brand at the least. That's gonna be number four. Number three on this list is blend and localization. We'll start with localization because blend kind of was explained in the other. Um, the other previous notes, but number three is going to be localization because when you start listening to different subwoofers You start hearing different subwoofers at different times because you don't have really good blend with the two subwoofers You can really locate where the subwoofers are going from We all know the rule or most of us do if you can hear where your subwoofer is coming from It's too loud. So if I have my home theater right here in front of me have my TV I have a, my speaker here, speaker here, and then I have my surrounds in the back. Let's say I had my subwoofer behind me in the back left corner. This is my left corner back here. And I can pinpoint where it's at with my eyes closed, then it's too loud. You want to have it blend in with the rest of your loudspeakers. That means your front, left, and right, your center, and your surround. You want all your speakers to be um, cohesive as one unit. But if you can hear your subwoofer and where it's at in the room, then it's too loud. So that's what localization is. We also run into a problem when you have different subwoofers. You can start to hear different qualities of the subwoofers because they're different subwoofers. So if I have a subwoofer over here on this side of the room and then have a subwoofer back here on this side of the room and I can hear the difference of it, it's because they're different subwoofers. The subwoofer on this side of the room may be really strong between 20 and 50 hertz, just thunderous bass. And then back here, it's really good at 70, 80, maybe 90. It really loud at that point. Um, that's because your subwoofers are different and you're going to have um, issues hearing subwoofers when you're watching your movies. You're going to have one half of the room sound really, really good and then the back half of the room sound really, really good and never going to have them sound really good at the same time. So you really want to get that blend and get that localization and you're only going to do that when you get the same subwoofer or at least the same model. So that's going to be number three. Number two on this list is probably the most controversial one out of all of them and I've covered this on my channel a couple times. It's going to be sealed versus ported. You definitely want to get the same type of subwoofer, nonetheless, if you're going to mix and match subwoofers of different brands, of different models, at least make sure that it's either both ported or both sealed. Um, real quickly, the difference between the two is you have those ports at the bottom, usually you have one port, some have two, some have three, but those ports make a giant difference in the sound and the frequency response and the roll off that you have in that speaker. So if that speaker's frequency response is 20 hertz up to 180, and it's a ported subwoofer, once I get down to that 20, I'm gonna have a quick roll off, a really quick roll off, because when ported, when you port your subwoofers, it drastically drops off when it gets to its lower end of its frequency response. When you have a sealed subwoofer, it rolls off much more gradually, meaning if you have a flat line and you start to get towards its lower frequencies, it starts to roll off a little bit slower. If you have a ported subwoofer and you get to its end of its frequency spectrum, it drops off immediately, pretty much just falling off of a cliff um, essentially. So when you get a ported subwoofer or a sealed subwoofer, your frequency response, your roll off is going to be very different. Um, a lot of times ported subwoofers get lower than sealed, um, depending on how big that sealed box is. Um, a lot of times ported just gets lower because it has that, um, that port. That's pretty much it. It adds extra bass, it adds extra tuning, things like that. You can really tune a ported box to how you like it if you're making a custom one. With a sealed box, it's really dependent on the driver. Um, you'll put stuff inside the cabinet to make it feel like a bigger driver or a bigger enclosure. There's ways to make a sealed box sound really, really low, but you're usually going to need a big box um, and you put some, some dampening inside of it to make it sound really good. But you really want to match your subwoofers, um, subwoofer type because you're really going to have issues, especially in that lower end, 
and even in the mid-range high end because again sealed boxes they they perform a little bit better with music because they're much tighter much cleaner much more um, accurate ported boxes are more made for movies um, thunder explosions things like that that are made to really pound you in your chest that's what a ported subwoofer is for and so you don't want to have a sealed subwoofer and a ported subwoofer and try to blend it it will not work you may be thinking, well, what if I get a ported subwoofer and then get a sealed subwoofer so then I can have one for music and one for movies? Sure, do that. Don't play them at the same time, though. If you're going to have a subwoofer made for music, then have a sealed subwoofer and only turn that on when you're using, you know, listening to um, your music. But when you're using movies and things like that, you use your ported subwoofer, turn off the sealed, and then use your ported subwoofer for your movies. That's what it's usually made for. Now, there are really good ported subwoofers for, for music as well. Um, and a lot of a lot of subwoofers nowadays allow you to tune your ports so you can plug them so you can have a sealed box essentially and you can get around um, those ported issues that you have with traditional ported subwoofers. So um, nonetheless, you want to match your subwoofer's type. So if you're getting ported, get another ported. If you have a sealed, get another sealed. That's going to be reason number two. Now reason number one, not sure if you guys guessed it, but it's going to be, hold on, hold on, wait a minute, stop the video, stop right here. I see you're not subscribed to the channel. And why aren't you subscribed to the channel? Tell me, what's your reason? What's your reason? I'm over here making videos for you, you're not subscribed, definitely hit that subscribe button. You need to be subscribed, I'll wait. Go ahead. Just down below, just hit it, the big red button, just hit that button, subscribe, make sure you push that bell. I'll wait for you. You subscribed yet? There's no reason not to be subscribed. There's a lot of good things going on on this channel. Subscribe right now. All right, back to the video. But it's gonna be power. Just straight, raw power. You wanna match the power of your subwoofers together. You don't wanna get a 200 watt amp max and then have a subwoofer that's 1000 watts max. And the issue with that is the driver's ability to reproduce low frequencies, high frequencies, mid, mid range frequencies um, with ease. Um, if you're using, let's say you're using a ported subwoofer. Let's say subwoofer A is ported, it's a thousand watts, yeah, thousand watts max, and then you have subwoofer B that's ported, um, two hundred watts max. And let's say you put in a movie, which is a heavy LFE bass track, super hard on the subwoofer. You can crank up that thousand watt max subwoofer a lot higher than you can with that two hundred watt, and you're gonna hear the difference. Um, the first way you're gonna hear the difference is um, port chuffing. That's when the air is passing through the subwoofer through the ports and you can actually hear that air. It sounds terrible. It's almost like distortion in a way. And then the second way you're gonna hear the difference is the actual driver's distortion itself. Um, excursion is when a speaker moves in and out, back and forth. Um, the magnet moves it back and forth. It has a driver, has a manic on the back, and the speaker moves back and forth to try to reproduce those frequencies. And when you try to turn up a subwoofer to its limit, you start to reach the limit of that subwoofer's excursion. Um, its basket, its voice coil, things like that. You start to reach the limits of it. And the more that subwoofer moves, the more that coil heats up, and eventually that coil burns. And that's how you blow your subwoofer. It burns that coil, your subwoofer is dead, it's a goner. And so you wanna have an amplifier that can um, sufficiently do what you want it to do. So if you wanna crank up loud music, crank up loud uh, movies all the time, you want a subwoofer that can handle that. You don't wanna mix and match subwoofers because if you turn one subwoofer at the same volume as another and it's a different subwoofer, different power, you're probably gonna end up losing one of your subwoofers because of it. So for example, really quickly, I have two PB4000s, so I know for sure that they're both gonna handle the same amount of information that I give them with ease. If I have a PB4000 and then I plug up my PB1000 and I turn it up to the level of the PB4000, my PB1000 is a goner quick. Not even a, a close second, not even a match. Um, also, not only does power make a difference, you really wanna have the same power because you wanna have the same volume level. So if you're listening to, let's say, a, a music track that has a lot of bass in it, you want to crank it up because you're cleaning the house, you want music to fill the whole room, the whole house, so you crank that sound up right there, you have your PB4000 just blaring, subwoofer is just going crazy, it sounds great, and then your PB4000 is struggling, distortion, port chuffing, um, it smells bad, that's also a really good indicator that you're blowing your subwoofer is the smell, it's just having a bad day. Um, you really want to be able to match your volume level because you want to be able to turn your subwoofers up to match the level of your loudspeakers. And if your subwoofer can't keep up with your loudspeakers, then it almost sounds like your bass isn't moving and your volume is. This is your volume 
off the charts there and your bass is stuck here because this reaches the max. You're almost like, where'd my bass go? Uh, a lot of speakers have DSP, digital sound processing, so they'll lower your bass as your volume goes up to protect the subwoofer. Um, so you really want a subwoofer that can go with your volume. You don't want a subwoofer to start falling behind because it has no power to give. So definitely match your power. That's gonna be number one. If you're gonna get two different subwoofers, if you're gonna try to mix them, please mix them with the same power. Um, power is everything when it comes to subwoofers. If you're gonna be a subwoofer, you need to be able to handle the bass. That's just point blank. Um, but that's gonna be number one for me. All right guys, that was seven reasons why you should not mix subwoofers. If you have any other um, points that I didn't make, please leave it in the comments down below. Um, people really need to know these things. You think you can just buy one subwoofer and buy another one and just put them together? It does not work that well. It is possible, but it's completely hard and most people don't have the means to do it. So if you have any other reasons that I didn't list down below, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, um, definitely leave them down below in the comments below so that everybody is aware of it. Also, if you found this um, video to be informative, to be really cool, to be fun, please leave another comment. Let me know that you liked the video. Leave a like, smack that like button, and definitely hit that subscribe button for more videos in the future. We have a lot of big things coming up. If you didn't see the last video, I am making a second home theater in this room here. It's almost finished. I've got my furniture where I wanted it. I picked my speakers, and now I'm ready to set it up. I gotta pick a receiver and things like that. So it's gonna be a second listening room in here, and I'm super cool. I'm super happy to show you guys that one. It's gonna be more for the budget-minded people. Um, it's probably gonna be my experiment room so we can get different speakers um, that don't cost so much that we can get new products out there for you guys to look at that you may not been aware of. But we still have my main theater in the big room, so that's not going anywhere. Um, but definitely stay tuned to that. Also, my big theater is changing completely. Everything is gonna be different. Um, new layout, new furniture, new aesthetics, just everything's gonna be so different. So I, I'm going for a modern look, and I think you guys are gonna like that. So definitely stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe right now because we have really cool things um, happening on the channel. And if you guys have been around for a while, you guys know when I get new things, I give away old. So you might be getting some giveaways here a little bit as well. So definitely stay tuned for that. And leave me a comment down below what you thought about my intro and, and my outro about to come up in a second. Got a new outro. So tell me what you guys think about my new intro and my outro. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay, this guy out.